Alrighty, my friends, welcome back to the final video. If you're watching this for oceanography, if you're watching this for another class, then don't even bother. <laughs> um, but so in this video here, we're going to cover symbiosis um, and kind of the, the three main types of relationships that we see in symbiotic relationships. And in our cases, we're going to look at examples and um, from the oceans, right? But if you're watching this for another class, of course, consider how symbiosis can be attained or how it is attained in, with different animals and different ecosystems. Um, even if you're in the oceanography class, you know, screw it, may as well try and think about other ways um, that these occur as well. So perhaps you've heard of symbiotic relationships before, perhaps you haven't, um, but if you have, review. If not, new, right? Okay, so you, let's see here. Symbiotic relationships um, is defined or are defined um, as a relationship between animals in which one or more organism will benefit. Um, and the, the one or more is the, the benefit part is the, is the interesting aspect here, right? Um, so we're going to start with our first relationship, which is commensalism. So this is where one species benefits, but the other one is unaffected. Uh, in this case, we have a couple of examples. Um, I have a grouper and a remora, um, or a shark and some pilot fish. So basically the idea here is that um, these creatures kind of hang out with each other, um, and but there's no harm uh, or benefit from one of the animals. So in this case with the grouper and the remora, the grouper provides um, protection basically from the remora because, you know, it is big and a lot of animals generally won't mess around with it. So it provides a sort of like a bodyguard sort of thing for the remora. Similarly can be said for the this particular shark um, and pilot fish. Um, where again, it's basically no one, no one really wants to mess with a shark, right? So the pilot fish are, um, in this case, protected, um, but the shark, there's no harm, no foul there, right? So they're just kind of like hanging out, hanging out for the ride. Again, a way that you can think about this is like um, bodyguard, <laughs> sort of, sort of thing, right? Uh, next one is mutualism. So of course, uh, this means that the relationship for each spe each species, excuse me, um, derives a benefit. So, of course, the classic uh, example here is a clownfish and a sea anemone. Um, really, it's, it's a common one, right? Especially if you've uh, seen this lovely movie, Finding Nemo. Um, so the, the interesting thing here and like the reason why this is, you know, a really beautiful mutual relationship um, is that the clownfish is very territorial. Um, so it uses the anemone as its home. But usually an enemy you kind of eat fish, right? Um, or kind of filter feed and, and have whatever's in there. Um, but, and they're stingy. The tentacles are stingy, stingy. But the clownfish have adapted to have this special mucus on the outside, which protects them from the stinging tentacles of the anemone. So the anemone benefits because the clownfish is basically the protection um, from, the, from anything that wants to eat it. Um, and then the uh, clownfish benefits because it's its home, right? So everybody everybody wins in this particular case, which we you love to see it, right? So consider other um, forms or consider other relationships in the oceans that may indeed be also mutualistic. So both species have to benefit. Lastly is the not so fun one, right? Parasitism. So this is where one species benefits whereas the other one is harmed. Um, so in this case, usually isopods are the, um, are the parasites here. Uh, some, th they're different for, uh, you know, for each variety, for each species. Um, I believe in this case, um, the soldier fish here, uh, the isopod is kind of like attached to the top and almost kind of acts like a, as the brain in a way. Um, and this one here on the right is an isopod basically acting as the tongue. So anything that the fish tries to eat the um, isopod actually gets to eat it first. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of different types of parasites um, out in the wild. Things like ticks or leeches or tapeworms, you know, anything like that is a parasite um, that you can like go a deep dive into, into the internet and find like weird parasites that are like in your eyeballs and stuff. You can see it's weird or brain parasites. Uh, if you're watching this in the spring of 2024, a 
certain um, presidential guy who said that a worm ate part of his brain and died in it, which is weird to announce to everybody. Um, but you know, here we are. So those are the three different types of symbiotic relationships in the oceans. Um, one that I didn't mention in terms of uh, mutualism is also coral. So coral is a really, really beautiful um, relationship, symbiotic relationship between zoanthale and the polyps of the coral um, and tropical coral reef stripes. So, and they both benefit from, from living with each other. But then when one of them leaves, when the zoanthale leaves, then it leaves the polyps out on their own in the skeleton. And then, um, you know, that's when that's what coral bleaching is, right? So um, it's really interesting, all these relationships, again, not only in the oceans, but also um, out in wild and nature. So I encourage you to think of any other relationships or try to spot relationships as maybe you're like, walking down the road or um, driving down the road, whatever, and just kind of like try to identify these different relationships um, out in the wild. So with that, thank you all so, so much once again and last time for your time and attention. Um, and thank you again so very much for watching.